Welcome to uh, Europe PCR TV. I'm uh, William Wines from uh, NUI Galway in Ireland and I'm the chairman of PCR. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Stefan Windeker, who's chairman of the cardiovascular division at the University of Bern and also uh, president chairman of the uh, ESC practice guidelines committee. Welcome Stefan. Thank you William to be here. I understand that at this um, a meeting, something big happened in terms of the treatment of patients with uh, aortic valve stenosis. Uh, to me, this seems like a shift in paradigm, is it? It is, uh, William. Truly, there is a shift in paradigm by which transcatheter aortic valve implantation in the near future will become the default therapy for all patients with symptomatic severe aortic stenosis. And the important change is that up to now, at least low-risk patients were preferentially considered for surgical aortic valve replacement, but this has clearly changed with the advent of uh, new evidence. So you have the, it's a strong statement, and you have the evidence to back it up? Yes, uh, there is uh, actually ample of uh, evidence and we have to recognize uh, that in an area where there was the absence of any randomized clinical trials up to 11 years ago, now we have evidence from seven randomized clinical trials in 8,000 uh, patients. And what it indicates in synthesis is that up to two years uh, mortality is significantly reduced in favor of transcatheter aortic valve implantation. And this benefit is particularly pronounced if the transfemoral route is chosen for the intervention. There's also benefit as it relates to stroke with a significant benefit in terms of the less invasive technique. And finally, uh, patients that undergo that procedure are less frequently rehospitalized. So from a patient perspective, the important endpoints, death, stroke, and rehospitalization, they are all in favor of the transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Hmm. So there is evidence along all aspects, traditional endpoints, patient-related outcome metrics, and also some cost-effectiveness data? Yes, uh, so importantly, uh, there are not only clinical benefits, uh, so the entire topic of health resource utilization is beneficial for the less invasive technique. As you would imagine, it takes less time to perform the procedure, but importantly, patients are less long hospitalized. They don't require typically an intensive care unit stay. The overall hospitalization duration is shortened. And the result is that up to two years, the cost effectiveness is similar or even better for transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Hmm. So will this affect the way care is delivered? Uh, uh, groups are being consolidated, hospital organization? I think we are only at the beginning, but certainly within the next month and years there will be major changes. And uh, the likely changes that will take within a hospital setting is that uh, cardiovascular surgery and cardiologists will form units where they work together in order to deliver the most appropriate therapy to individual uh, patients. So rather being in a surgical department and a medical department, the logical consequence is uh, that the specialists work together because they deliver the same therapy to patients. Mm -hmm. And the issue of durability that has been you know, put forward a number of times Yes, uh, so this is an important consideration and we have to acknowledge currently sound evidence. We only have to six years. There are some observational data up to 10 years, but clearly we need more evidence. Having said this, we also need to recognize that there is no solid data for surgical aortic valve replacement. So I think this is an opportunity for both transcatheter aortic valve implantation and surgical aortic valve replacement to gather additional data. Having said this, I think we also need to recognize that in the past it was never an argument in favor of mechanical prosthesis. Bioprosthesis were favored already in the surgical era. And I doubt uh, that any findings uh, 10 years from now will affect the clinical practice uh, to a meaningful degree. Mm -hmm. So considering the, the spectrum of patients with uh, uh, aortic valve stenosis and the options, what would be, in very practical terms, the um, preferred strategies from young to very old patients? So I think uh, the principle must be that the patient and the disease, the underlying disease, are at the center for decision making. 
you need to recognize that the vast majority of patients with aortic stenosis are elderly patients. It is a degenerative disease most frequently presenting in patients that are above 70 years of age, 80 years of age. And there clearly the preference will be formed by a prosthesis and given that for transfemoral transcatheter aortic valve implantation. On the other risks or uh, age spectrum, we have the young, very young patients, patients with congenital aortic valve abnormalities, patients perhaps with bicuspid valve disease. There, if they are less than 50 years of age and they have aortic stenosis, isolated aortic stenosis, mechanical prosthesis will need to be uh, considered. And importantly, associated aortopathy needs to be evaluated, which may require further surgical uh, treatment. And then there's a gray zone that requires individual decision making, and that's any patient between 50 and 65. Where the discussion will be between uh, the heart team members, the patient? Correct. So the patient will be at the center, and both uh, uh, a surgeon, cardiologists decide together what is the most uh, preferred therapy in individual patient. Thank you for this uh, very important uh, communication and also the uh, clear uh, proposal on how to tackle it and uh, how the future will, will evolve. Thank you for the opportunity co to contribute.